How's it going YouTube? Right, today we're going to have a look at a new car stereo system that we're fitting into the VW T5 Transporter Camper that I've got parked outside. Right, the one that I've got to fit is the new Toto uh, S8 Ultra. It's the new model. It says it on the box, so that makes it true. Uh, this is their flagship model, uh, the top of the range of Toto stereo system. In the camper right now, the one that I'm taking out is an Atoto S8 Ultra. Why am I taking that out, you might ask? There is a reason, we'll have a look at that in a second. Along with this uh, S8 Ultra, the, the seven inch model this is, uh, we, also, we also have this to fit. Uh, this is their HD03LR camera. This is a panoramic camera. Uh, I've actually also got one of these fitted on the van right now. Uh, but we'll have a look at this one and we'll see how to set it up because there's a bit of a setup to it as well. Also in the camper, I've got some of their other optional extras. Um, I've got the dash cam that's already fitted. I've got the tyre pressure monitoring system as well. Uh, these are all optional extras. Uh, they're fitted, so we'll wire those into the new system. Uh, right, so before I get this over on the bench and unbox it and have a look what we get in the box, let's nip out to the camper and see why I'm changing it. Uh, right, here we are in the camper. I've sat in the passenger seat because the sun's shining on the camera if I sit in the other side. Uh, this current stereo that's in now, uh, this is the Atoto S8 Ultra, the exact same stereo, but obviously not the new version. There's a few changes on the, the one inside, I believe. We'll have a look at that. Uh, but this one is exactly the same, except this one is the 10-inch screen model. Uh, as you can see, it's a doubled-in fitting, uh, so it fits into your standard tooled-in hole, uh, but it's got a screen here. Uh, this screen is on a bracket uh, that you can move in and out, up and down, and you can angle it to how you want. Uh, but this is how it looks on the dashboard. Uh, what I'm doing is the new one that we've got inside, that is the seven inch version of this stereo. In theory, it should be the exact same size as the doubled in hole, so, so it should sit back in the dash like a normal car stereo system, but still have the same performance as, as this one. Just to save any time on opinions, I think these stereo systems are absolutely fantastic. The screen quality is perfect, the blacks are black, the colours are nice and bright. It's a very, very good quality screen that you get on this. As you can see, it's quite highly reflective, but apart from the super reflectiveness, it's a really, really good quality screen. And the stereo system itself is very, very good and very responsive. I do like this. I've had this one in since I originally fitted on whenever that video was. Uh, what I will do is up in the corner, I'll stick a link to this video so you can check out this stereo system or this version of it if that's what you want to see. Uh, this is the 10 inch one, as I said. Uh, we have still got some extra bits up there, like the dash cam that fits into it. Uh, also in this glove box under this stuff here, uh, we've got the tyre pressure monitoring thing. We'll have a look at that as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rip this one out. Whilst I'm doing it, uh, you can see the little bumpy bits on these coloured panels here. I'm going to rip all those off. I'm going to repaint those and make them a lot nicer. I've got like a gunmetal grey that I'm going to paint those. Um, if anybody's got a transporter and they are interested in how to get all these trims off and repaint them, um, I'll also put a link up to that video where I originally painted these this colour. Obviously don't do it the same because as you can see, it's kind of bubbled up and gone a bit horrible, but it will tell you how to remove these panels. So what I'll do is I'm gonna get all this painted, get this out, get this ready for the new stereo system. So the next bit you'll see now is the unboxing of the new stereo system. And then once that's all unboxed, we'll have a look through it. We'll come in here and we'll fit it. So let's get back inside and have a look at the new one. Right, quick one before we go back inside, there's all the dash painted. Um, I've done this like a, a gunmetal grey colour, you can see there, I've done those, I've done those bits, I've done that one down there, uh, the, obviously the radio's out, um, I've left some of the bits already in, we'll have a look at those later, they're things like the, the GPS and the microphone, uh, because we'll need those for the new one, it saves me fitting them again. One thing I wanted to show you quickly now is on the old one, in there, coming out of that back corner. Um, I had these USB sockets here for like external storage. And if we want to wire in uh, a phone, hardwired in rather than a wireless CarPlay, we could have it on a wired system. Um, I'm doing it slightly different on this one. I had blanks in there. What I've done is I've taken one blank out and I've bought this 
off of Amazon. Let's have a quick look, specifically for this vehicle, the T5. Um, it replaces this blank over here, and it's got two USB slots there. Uh, but the good thing about it is one of them is power, and one of them is data. So what I can do, go into this 12 volt socket here, because I used to have USB, I've changed that for a 12 volt socket, because later on what we're gonna do is my videos when I'm doing the CarPlay stuff is I can review some of those screens that sit up here and I'll have the 12 volt socket to plug them in. What I've got here is these are taken off of that socket up there. So I've got 12 volts there, that's on an ignition live. Uh, what I can do is I can wire that into there for the power. And then this second one here, that can plug into the back of the stereo system. Uh, so this one at the bottom, this will be for data. So we can have one for data. So if I'm wanting to plug it into the car stereo system, I can. And the other one will be specifically just for charging. So that's what we're going to do. So I just thought I'd show you that. Uh, what I'll do is I got this off of Amazon. I'll stick some links in the description where I got this, just in case anybody else wants to get one. But I just thought I'd show you quickly before uh, we go any further with this, because I'm going to fit that now. And whilst you're here, there's a bit of a sneak peek of the next project. I picked this up yesterday. Uh, I'm going to do a full camper conversion on that and video it all. Right, back to the bench and let's get this S8 unboxed. Right, here we have it on the bench. This is the Atoto S8 Ultra. It's the new Gen 2 version. This is an Android-based operating system running on an octo-core processor. We've got two things to look at, the main car stereo, obviously. And here later, uh, we've got the HD03 LR camera. This is like a panoramic reverse camera. There's actually one of these fitted on the van now. I've done a full video just on this specific item and how to set it up. I will put a link down in the description for that, but we will unbox this anyway and have a look at it. Uh, but if you have a look at that link below, you can see exactly how to set these cameras up and how to use them. Uh, but we'll have a look at this in a second. So I think what we'll do is we'll open this up, we'll see what you get in the box, and then we'll go through some of the specs of the system uh, we'll open up the camera box, we'll go through some of the specs of that, and then we'll go out to the van, we'll fit it, see how to fit it, and then we'll run through how to use it. I'm hoping uh, the S8 Ultra, the 10-inch one that I've got in the van, has got an absolutely awesome screen. Um, one of the best I've seen on any car stereo. I'm hoping this one is just the same. All right, so let's get this thing open and see what you get in the box. Opening up. We've got lots of cables. So I think what we'll do is I'll move this box out of the way. Uh, we'll pull everything out one at a time and we'll go through what you get in it. Right, the main power itself, uh, we've got three different versions of the loom. You only need one of these. These two in particular, you have an ISO connector B and an ISO connector A. Uh, depending on your vehicle will depend on which one you use. The, really the main difference between these two is the ignition live and the permanent live. I've mentioned this before in other videos. Uh, if we have a look here, all right, if I get these a bit closer so you can see, uh, the yellow is the battery live and the red is the ignition live. And what you can see there is in the third position on this one, we've got the yellow. Third position in this one is the red. And if we look around the side, you can see we've got the red there and the yellow there. So the, literally the only difference between these two looms is the red and the yellow are swapped over. Uh, so what you need to do is you need to find out from your vehicle uh, which position on your ISO connectors uh, the ignition live and the permanent live is. We will have a look at that when we go out to the vehicle. Uh, the third loom, this one, is if you've not got ISO connectors in your vehicle so you can't convert them, uh, what you need to do is you can wire it in from scratch. So everything's hardwired in, everything's labeled up individually. So you can wire that in. You can get a wiring diagram for your vehicle and wire that in. Uh, but most times what you can do is you can use these ISO plugs. This end goes into the Atoto. This end is your standard ISO fitting. Uh, what most people do is if you have a look on eBay or Amazon or something like that, and if you search for an ISO converter for your vehicle, what you can do is you can get a little plug that goes from whatever plug is on your vehicle to an ISO connector, and you can plug that in there and then plug that into the Atoto. ISO is the industry standard, so a lot of cars do have these, but sometimes you might need a little adapter cable to go from your vehicle to ISO. Right. We've got some things in bags. Uh, this one's a 4G antenna because 
On the car stereo itself, you can fit a SIM card into it, so it's got permanent internet or a permanent phone. Uh, we will be doing that. I've got a spare SIM card. Uh, this one is kind of the same thing, but a Wi-Fi antenna. This is so you can connect to the car stereo using Wi-Fi. Here we have a microphone for your hands-free and the GPS antenna. Next in the box, we get some little looms that have got some uh, USB connectors on. These are for your phone if you're connecting by wired uh, connection or if you're adding a hard drive to it or if you've got any of the optional extras like the DVR camera or the tire pressure monitoring system or something like that. Uh, we have some mounting brackets for the cage. We'll have a look at that. Screen protector, two screen protectors actually. Uh, this one's a HD film and this one's a frosted film. So if you don't want that glossy look, so we will have a look at these. Uh, we've got two stereo surrounds. Depending on your vehicle will depend on which one you need. What we'll do is we'll see when we get to that point. Lots of manuals and instructions and things like that. This has also got wiring diagrams in it. Instructions for the stereo system itself. Um, instructions for the gesture control. This one has gesture control so you can wave at it and do some fancy raving and it will do stuff. Rather than having to look at the stereo system and find which button you want to press, you can just do some big fish, little fish in front of the screen and it'll do stuff for you. Right, lastly in the box is the car stereo system itself. Uh, we'll have a look at that in a second. We'll just have a look at this camera first. Right, this camera, this is a HD03LR. Um, it's like a virtual panoramic camera. I've got one on the vehicle now. I've been using it for a while. They are quite good little things actually. Um, it just looks like a normal little reversing camera, uh, really good quality actually, feels solid and metal. And what it is, it's like a super wide view. Uh, so when you're looking at the screen, it looks like a little drone floating above the vehicle. You can see the back of the vehicle there from above. And when you're reversing back, it shows you everything around the vehicle, literally like it's a drone looking from above at the vehicle. It's quite clever how it works. Uh, these are an optional extra. Uh, we've obviously got one with this. I've got one on the vehicle now. Uh, but what you get is you get the camera itself. You get a loom. Uh, there's two wires to wire in. Uh, this end goes to the stereo system. This end goes to the camera. So you plug these two together. Uh, you've got a black, which is a ground. This pink one here, what you do is you wire this into your rear lights, into a reverse light. Uh, so when you get a reverse signal from your lights, it put power down this pink wire here, down at the other end of the cable. Uh, that power comes out of this pink cable and then it connects into the stereo system to tell your stereo system when you're in reverse. This red one, this just wants an ignition live to it. So what it does is when you've got the ignition on, it powers up the camera. And then this plugs into the back of the car stereo system. Uh, that's what you get with this camera. Uh, there is one more item. In the main box itself, right at the bottom, you get this great big floor mat here, which is like a, a massive, great big checkered calibration mat, which you use to set up the camera initially when you're first calibrating it. I'm not gonna unfold it because I know from experience it's an absolute nightmare to fold back down to get in this box. So I will leave it like that. As I said, I'll put a link down in the description where you which is a dedicated video to this camera and how to set it up. I'll put a link down to that, but we will have a look at it once this is all wired up as well. The stereo system itself, uh, as you can see, it's a really high re highly reflective screen. Uh, the one on the 10 inch one is exactly the same. I personally don't find it a problem. Um, some people might do, but the screen quality itself, I have never seen anything as good as this on a car stereo. This has a very high quality QLED screen. As I mentioned before, it's an octo-core processor, so it's pretty nippy. Uh, the first generation especially was, so I'm assuming this one will be the same, if not faster. It runs on an Android-based operating system, uh, which has obviously been rewrote by a Toto. Ignore the cat's tail. On the front, you can see we've got a little SIM card slot, so we can have a 4G connection on this. We've got built-in Wi-Fi, dual Bluetooth and USB. So there's four ways to connect to this. Uh, another thing that I like on these systems is actual real buttons rather than the capacitive ones. 
Um, I've had some before that have got the capacitive buttons and when you're driving you're trying to put your finger in the right place and it's quite difficult. I do like to have physical buttons on a stereo system so if you're wanting to turn it up or down you can just reach across without looking what you're doing uh, and turn it up or down. Obviously you can use the steering controls as well on more modern cars. On the Volkswagen I can't. Um, on the new Peugeot Boxer I will be wiring the 10 inch one back into there and using the steering controls and everything else. Down in this corner uh, we've got the little camera for the gesture controls. We've got a little micro SD slot there so if you've got any music or videos or anything like that you can add them in there. You've got a very convenient little aux plug on the front um, so if you're wanting to plug in an external source uh, you can plug it straight in there without having to mess about trying to get to the back of the stereo. Uh, right at the top there's a little mic there as well as you can see. Starting from this corner you've got your 4G connection, your GPS antenna, uh, your two USB looms, uh, you've got a digital uh, audio input, FM antenna, uh, your various uh, inputs and outputs for your subwoofer, uh, reversing camera, some video ins and then obviously your RCA outputs. Uh, for your amplifiers. Uh, we've got a built-in amplifier in this which is a 4x49 watt. So these have been as powerful as what I need them to be. Uh, in the van I've got a subwoofer as well so I will be plugging that in and the amp will be plugged into the subwoofer there. Uh, your main loom plugs in over here. Uh, down here you've got your two little plugs, one for the microphone and one for the steering wheel control. Uh, it's got a nice little wiring diagram there on the side so you can see how to wire it up. So for now let's go out, let's take this and let's install this into the vehicle, get it working, see how to install it and then let's go through how to use it and some of the features that are on it. Right, quick one before I fit it. There's a side-by-side -side comparison of the 10 inch versus the 7 inch. You can see there's quite a bit of difference there actually. This one's massive compared to this one. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit that one in the Peugeot. Uh, this new one's going in this. Uh, so what we can do is we can compare life having a 7 inch instead of a 10 inch. Uh, to be fair I should already know. Right there you can see we've already fitted the USB. This wire here is that USB from this socket there. We'll plug that in later. Uh, there's some wires already here so I've cheated a little bit. Just down there look we've got the GPS aerial. That is this purple one right here. Also up here we've got the microphone from the hands free. That's that one there. Uh, we've got the normal antenna. This one here is the reverse camera. Um, I've already got that fitted. I'll show you on the back. Uh, there's the camera right on the back there on the, above the number plate. You can check that video out how to do that. Um, I've already got a loom plugged in here as well. Uh, this one here is the ISO connector A. Um, I'll just show you quickly how to tell which one to use. So if you get yourself a voltmeter, stick it on DC. Uh, you can see on these positions here, you've got the yellow one there and the red one around there. So if you just plug any one in, uh, what you can do, uh, so I've stuck that in there, look. Uh, the black one in the corner is Earth. Um, I've stuck the red one into the yellow because that's supposed to be a permanent live. Um, if we look on the meter, that's showing 14 volts now. Just to double prove it, if we take that one out and I'll plug it into that red one, that's plugged down there into the red one. Uh, we've got zero volts showing there. If I turn the ignition on, uh, there we are, look. We've got 13 volts with the ignition on. So what you need to do is check that that yellow is got 12 volts all the time and the red one is a switch 12 volts from the ignition. If it's not doing that and it's the other way around, then take this loom off and use the other one and then that should be the right way around there. So on this particular vehicle, uh, the Volkswagen Transporter, the T5, is using ISO connector A. Uh, what I've also done is on the loom, it's got this pink wire. Uh, the pink wire is for the rear camera that you can see there. Uh, so that's a reverse signal coming from the rear camera. So this red wire here, when I put it in reverse, it gets power on and then it's coming down and telling the radio that it's in reverse. Um, there is amplifier because I've got a subwoofer. Uh, this one is for my subwoofer. So we'll be plugging that one in as well. And lastly, coming out of here, we've got two USBs. One is from this socket here. And the other one is from right up there, if you can see it, uh, the DVR camera. That's an optional extra. Uh, we'll have a look at that. That literally just plugs in via USB into one of those plugs there. So that's basically it. That's just matching up your plugs. Uh, the main thing is getting this connector right here. So you've got your 
permanent live and your ignition live the right way around. So then all it is is a case of plugging all these in to the right slots. Uh, we've got two more to fit. We've got a 4G antenna and a Wi-Fi antenna. Um, what I normally do, and it seemed to work perfectly fine on the last ones, is I just took those out, plugged them into the back, and I literally just threw them into the hole down there. And they seem to have got a perfectly good reception for what I needed. So that's exactly what I'm going to do again on this one. So let's have a look how you mount this into this hole. First thing we need to do is fit these side plates onto the side of the radio there. So I'll get some screws and I'll screw those on now. Uh, I can't do it holding the camera, so I'll see you in a second when they're on. Right, let's have a look what I've done. Uh, what you can see is I've fitted these side bits on there. Uh, then those little angle bits, it's got some screws there so you can screw them to it. Uh, there's a little gap there behind the fascia. Uh, the silver bit's the fascia, the black bit is the vehicle itself. Uh, so those little angle bits will fit behind there. So what I need is this edge here to be in line with that bit there. And then what we do is we use this bit here, then that will go over it. You'll see it'll make sense as we put it in. So what I'll do is if I pull this front fascia off there, and then what I'll do is I'll fit this stereo in behind it. Quick one before I push it all back. I've got it all plugged in there. Uh, as you can see down in the bottom, I've got the reverse camera in there, uh, the subwoofer in there, uh, 4G aerial, GPS plugged in there. Uh, the two USB looms, the two behind the stereo are plugged in, uh, one for that socket and the one for the camera. Uh, the other two are fed through here and they're coming out the glove box so they can plug into other things. We'll have a look at that in a minute. Uh, we've got the main power loom plugged in there and the microphone and the Wi-Fi antenna plugged in down the bottom as well. As I've said, uh, these antennas for now, I've just crammed them in that hole and just shoving them behind the stereo. So right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to feed all these cables back. Uh, obviously, I've pulled this fascia out of the way, so I'll feed those back and I'll push it into place and I'll show you what we're going to do. That's pushed back. Uh, these little angle bits, they're stopping it from going any further. It's quite tight in there, to be honest, so I don't need to screw it or anything like that. On the bigger 10 inch one, I put some screws there through the front just because of the weight of the screen. But this one, to be honest, I'm literally just gonna leave it like that because that's pretty tight in there. So what I'll do now is this fascia, if I push that back, hopefully this will be at the right distance for forwards and backwards. And then what we can do is we can put that little trim around. Right, there's all that push back. Uh, that's obviously floating in that hole now. Because I've not screwed it, I've got a little bit of movement up and down. Uh, this is the, the right distance. Uh, so what I can do now is get this trim and we can just push that into place there. And then that finishes that off. That's it in there. Uh, down here uh, on the USB, I've got this external storage. I've plugged that into this. Uh, this is the tire pressure monitoring system. Uh, this is an optional extra as well. So there it is in the dashboard. So what I'll do, is i'll just turn the ignition on now actually make sure it powers up there we are it's coming on uh, so what i'll do is i'll set up the camera on the tripod so it's not as wobbly and let's go through some features of how to use this here we are zoomed in on the screen uh, i've done been doing a little bit of setting up just to get it going just to skip a few bits but the main thing is i've already connected the iphone by bluetooth uh, to the stereo system itself so it's already paired up to my phone we can swipe and we've got a few different starting screens there, which because it's an Android system, you can press and hold things and you can delete them and add new apps and change it around to be exactly how you want it to be. Uh, you can change the background on this as well. If we go into gallery, uh, you've got a load already on the system. Uh, you, it's got USB as, and things like that as well. So if you had a memory card or plug in a USB with some more things, you can change them to what you want. So if I pick that one, for example, uh, press down here, then that saves it as the display. So now we've got that saved as our wallpaper. So all these screens are highly customizable to how you'd expect as an Android based system. For CarPlay and Android Auto, uh, CarLink 2 is the app you want to be using. As I said, I've already paired my iPhone to this system via Bluetooth. So now if I go to CarLink 2, 
um, it'll start looking for my phone which is paired to it and then it'll connect and start up the uh, uh, CarPlay. And now we're into the usual CarPlay that everybody knows. Uh, one thing you will find with this is if you leave it in CarPlay, as in if it's in this screen when you turn the ignition off, uh, when you come back in the car, it will automatically connect to the CarPlay straight away. So you won't be into this screen, you'll be straight into the CarPlay screen here. As I mentioned, um, I've got some optional extras already plugged into this. One is the dash cam and two is a tire pressure monitoring system. So if I press this HD DVR, uh, as you can see, that's starting up my camera system now. Uh, that's up on the mirror, up the top, and that is automatically recording. This is an optional extra, so you've got a dash cam recording all the time. Uh, you can go over here and it'll show you your recordings and you can pull off what you want and put it onto the memory stick. Same with the tire pressure monitoring system, that's an optional extra, so if I press here that'll go straight into it and that shows us the pressures on our tires, what we've got, and it puts a warning on the main screen if you go below any of the set points that we, you can set on here. If I turn my ignition on, uh, put the vehicle in reverse, uh, this will start up the camera, this is not set up as yet, as you could, because you can see it's a big curved display there. Uh, what I need to do is I need to get that calibration mat out and I need to set all that up properly and then it'll straighten this image and it, it brings it all back into the correct perspective. And then what happens is when you're reversing, uh, this creates a picture of where you are and it, and it builds up around you so you can see around your vehicle uh, what's around you. As I said, uh, there's a link in the description to that video, which is sp specifically on this camera. It's a really good system. Uh, this is for the reversing camera. I've yet to set this up. Now, a quick look from the left. Uh, we've got there is a normal phone. Um, I don't particularly use this, to be honest. I use the CarPlay for the phone. Next one along is your radio. Obviously, I'll not tune that into anything because I'll get copyrighted. Uh, but as you can see, it's quite an extensive let me just mute that a second. As you can see, it's quite an extensive system, so you've got lots of extras for local radio and all that sort of stuff uh, that you can set up. Um, if you just find the station that you want, press and hold down here on whichever one you want, and it'll save it into that position there. On the, the next one along is your little play button for your media. Um, as you can see, I've got no video files. Uh, you've got the internal storage, or you've got the USB, so you can put on some films or anything that you want on there to watch your video files. Uh, next one along is the apps. We'll have a look at that in a second. Uh, navigation, you can set it up for whichever navigation you want to be on the screen. Uh, music, this is for whatever music you've got on the system, uh, whether it be on a memory card or a USB stick or anything like that. Uh, you can play your music from there. Uh, next one along is settings. Uh, you've got all your usual settings uh, for your uh, Wi-Fi and things like that. Um, if I connect now to my Wi-Fi, if I turn the Wi-Fi on, that'll connect to my home uh, because I'm parked outside the house. Uh, you could do this by hotspotting your phone or anything like that. And then once you've got your Wi-Fi, what that will let you do is you can go into your applications and then things like the Play Store will then be available to you. Uh, you can download some apps, whatever you want, the same as any other Android system. Uh, I've downloaded a few, just to try. Uh, obviously, we've got YouTube on there. Uh, so you can use your streaming services. Here's one of my videos that I've set up. If I press play on that now, as you can see, we've got a nice, good quality picture playing and then you can watch all your streaming services just like that. Uh, back out of there, you've got other things as well. Um, I've downloaded Netflix just to show you. I've not actually logged into it, I've not put my account or anything like that, but you've got Netflix and all the other streaming services. I've downloaded a quick game, we've got the Subway Surf here. So we can try the games, they're super responsive. I'm not particularly good at this game, but it works perfectly fine. The screens on these are absolutely fantastic. You can see how black the blacks are, hopefully, and how colourful the colours are. 
everything is super, super responsive. Uh, the only criticism I do have on this is uh, when we go to system in the settings, you can go to about device. You can see it's based on an Android version 10, which is, to be honest, getting a bit old in this day and age. So I would have liked to have seen a newer version of Android, to be honest. In the apps, we've got these uh, new some of these new features. One of them is gesture control, uh, which if you click on it, it's actually quite good. I was playing with it earlier, throwing some shapes. Uh, so what we can do is you can pick which gesture you want. Uh, if we turn, say, this swipe left on, uh, then where the microphone is, that's what that gesture actually does. So if I click on the microphone, you can pick what you want that gesture to do. So if we say swipe left is going home, then if I move my hand, there's my hand, if I move it in front of the screen left, you can see it's gone back to the home screen. So that's the new feature on this one, the gesture controls. Uh, there is another new feature as well that's a bit of a secret one. Uh, this stereo system has got a built-in tracker. Uh, so what you can do is you can set that up and then if your vehicle gets stolen or anything like that, uh, you can check on your tracker on the application and see where it is. Assuming you've got an internet connection. So if you want to use that, I'd advise putting a SIM card in there and using the 4G connection. Uh, but what you can do to enable it, uh, the application is called Track HU. Uh, there's a full set of instructions here that you get with it. Uh, but on this one, to turn it on is if we go into settings, uh, where device is there, if we press it four times quickly, you'll see down at the bottom that it will say GPS enabled. GPS app enabled, it says there down at the bottom. So now if we go back to home, uh, go into the apps, Go across, you'll see Track HU. That wasn't there before. Uh, so if we press on that, you can turn it on. Uh, then you get the QR code there, which you can scan and add to your account that you can set up on uh, the Toto website. And then track the vehicle using your maps on the website there. And if you want to hide the application again so people don't know it's there, uh, if we go into Settings, press Device again four times, GPS app disable. Now, if we go back, uh, you'll see that it's disappeared off of here altogether. So you can't even see it's there. So that's quite a good little tracker system that you can set up on this vehicle. So it protects against being stolen and things like that. Right, back at the home screen, you'll notice their equalizer. Um, it's got a very extensive equalizer on this for the sound quality. Uh, part of that is you've got things like time correction, uh, crossover so you can set a frequency crossover to cut out any unwanted frequencies uh, bass boost same with the subwoofer if we go into the subwoofer settings uh, you've got a bass boost there and a crossover across there it's a very extensive equalizer that you can really tune in this sound to exactly how you want it to be uh, one question that most people will ask is, is this DAB? Uh, sadly, no, it's not, uh, but it does say DAB plus there. If you press it, you realize it does nothing. Um, I believe there's an optional little box that you can get for this that enables the DAB on this system. Um, I will ask a Toto about that and try and find out, see if we can get one to try. Uh, but this, as it comes out of the box, is not DAB. Other things you can do with this, uh, you can see here, we've got the talk app on it. Uh, so what you can do is you can have an OBD uh, Bluetooth little module thing that plugs into your OBD socket, and then you can connect to this via talk. So then you can get all the real time information off of your vehicle as you're driving. You can set these up to exactly what you want and any engine lights or anything like that, you can fault find using this stereo system. A uh, useful little feature. So I think that's all I need to show you on this. Obviously, there's some other optional extras like the steering wheel remote and things like that. Um, if you've got steering wheel controls already, you can program this in. Uh, actually, quickly, if we have a look, across there, it's got steering wheel control set up. Uh, so what you do is you press and hold the button on your steering wheel and you press one of the functions that you want to program it to and it will program your st steering wheel controls to the button you wish to tune it to. 
Right, so that's the Atoto S8 on this vehicle. Um, I'll put links down below where you can buy one of these for yourself. Um, I'll put links down below with the 10 inch version as well, so you can check out that video. I'll also put links about this reverse camera, this panoramic reverse camera, so you can check that out. I will at some point fit the 10 inch into the camper on the new one, on the Peugeot. So that leaves me the top of the dashboard free now, so I can do some videos now on these uh, on the dash type of CarPlay systems that I've been doing in the crappy Fiesta before. Soon I'll start doing some videos on this new camper as well. Uh, so like the video if you liked it. Comment below if you've got anything you want to say. And I'll catch you guys in another video. Cheers.